Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to episode 16 of the Twitter application series. In today's video, I want to address a comment that I got in the last couple of days. And the question was how I can refactor my JSON code to be a little bit cleaner and also to be a little bit more robust. So I always find refactoring to be really fun and exciting and also at the same time, pretty challenging. So I'm gonna show you guys how I would perform some of this refactoring on my JSON parsing code. So let's go ahead and take a look at home data source first, and I will run the application to kind of render out a list of users and also a list of tweets from these two lines down here. So you see users in the first section and then you see the tweets in the second section. So in today's video, the goal is to kind of avoid these two mapping calls right here, line 22 and 23, and I want to make a simpler call for example, this right here, self.users equals users JSON array. I'm going to call something called decode. Self.tweets is also going to say tweets JSON array dot decode like that. Okay, so obviously I can't call these methods decode because these two arrays don't have a method called decode. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm going to show you how to extend arrays to have such a function called decode. And also going to show you guys how to use Swift generics to decode those objects into whatever you need them to be. So pretty advanced topic today. So I'm going to try to go through this as slowly as I can and to make it as non-confusing as I can as well. So let's see what we can do first. So if you try to build this and run this, it doesn't actually run. And the reason again is because decode doesn't exist on this array. What I can do is to extend something called a collection right here as a function decode. And let's just return some kind of any object array, return an empty array inside of decode. So what that gives me here is this function called decode is now available on this parameter, user JSON array, which is an array of JSON objects like this right here. So to fix these two compiler errors, I can do that and also fix that and try to run the, uh, the project now to render out kind of an empty list of users and tweets because line 15 is just returning an empty array. So this is exactly what we get, just this uh, header and this footer right there. Okay, so the next question I want to kind of raise here is I have a problem with this decode function where instead of just operating on these JSON arrays, uh, this decode function can also be called on this array of integers as well. And this is, that's not exactly what I want to have in my code. So how can I restrict this decode method to only be called on JSON array objects? Well, on this extension collection, I can specify where iteration dot the iterator dot element, the element is equal equal to JSON like that. So if I try to build now, it says that the object right here should not be able to be called. So decode like this. And you see now this red guy is coming up. So I've been able to restrict this decode just on these JSON arrays like that. So that's the first uh, fix for my code. The next thing I want to do is to get rid of this downcasting, this as bang user, as bang tweet downcasting. I wanna get rid of that so I don't have to type that all the time. So how do I do that is to, let me just bring that back. It's to use something called generics and this is the generic syntax. So if I decode this with a T and return type T array of T objects, this right here will actually infer based on what's on the left side exactly what these decoded objects will be. So I can remove that and also remove that as well and try to build and also try to run and everything is going to kind of render out as an empty list again. So pretty good stuff. Now what I need to do or what's left over inside of this little exercise is to bring over the JSON decoding inside of this map function into decode. So this might be a little tricky if you haven't done something like this before. So I'm gonna type this out as return map 
And inside of math, you can just return these objects, right? So you can do something like user and then JSON dollar sign zero. And dollar sign zero is just one of these elements inside of the collection. So if I try to remove this, try to build. And so there is a problem where this user thing right here and this T object. So what really needs to occur is this user guy needs to be constructed with this generic type, which is this T like that. And then now we can return a mapped array of T objects that are being constructed with this JSON thing. So now if you type, if you click on the error, it says that it doesn't have this JSON initializer constructor. And this constructor is really this JSON decodable protocol. So let me command and click into it. And you see this uh, constructor with this JSON object right here. So what that means is if I conform this generic T object to JSON decodable, that initializer will be available on this T object. So now this error is telling me to use a try in front of the T. And the reason why I need to do that is because the JSON decodable throws an error, so I need to try. If you build again, it tells me that I need to try in front of the map as well. And that's what that gets. And now I can actually throw those couple of errors that might potentially occur on the mapping and also the constructor of the JSON object. So now this allows me to correctly call this decode function down here. Okay. So now this error right here, if I bring up the little error console, it says user does not conform to JSON decodable. So what does that mean? Well, this JSON decodable generic is what one of these user objects really need to be. That's what this call is kind of complaining about. And the reason or the solution to fixing this guy right here is to go into user and I'm going to import Tron so that I can call Let's see, colon JSON decodable. So now this user class is of type JSON decodable. If I build now, this guy is kind of okay. I need to call try in front of this because the decode will potentially throw an error. And let's see, build one more time. I still have that last error for the tweet object, which is down here. And let me just import Tron. Also make this JSON decodable like so and also hit a try and try to run this right now. So this is going to actually render out the list of users and tweets inside of my list, like so. So that's pretty good stuff. I can also remove this parentheses right here is what I've noticed. You don't need those two parentheses. And that's all the code for the mapping that you'll need. If I remove these two lines of code, I should be okay. So let's kind of take a look at the code and see what we have kind of, or how we've benefited from this refactoring. Well, basically, anytime I want to decode one of these uh, JSON decodable arrays, I don't need to know the information about the, uh, the inside mapping function anymore. All I need to know is to call it with this equal on the left side of what type of objects it needs to be. And inside of the decode, decoding function, it'll be able to infer exactly what the decoder array needs to be. All right, so that's going to be it for today. And there's two things I wanna mention about Swift generics, and they're actually really, really important inside of Swift development. Uh, the first thing that's important about generics is that a lot of third-party frameworks like Alamo Fire will make pretty good use of generics to make their code easy to read as well as easy to maintain. The other thing about generics is that if you've joined a company as a junior iOS developer, a lot of these senior developers, uh, the code that they've written in the code base will have a lot of Swift generics in it just to make it really easy to maintain for the company. All right, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. Source code is available down in the description below. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, keep on coding guys, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.